good to see you. We're in a sermon series called Your Relationships with the Lord. There are many of them. We're hitting the high points. We've talked about God, the Lord, as being your creator. And then last week we talked about him being your savior. And today we're going to talk about him being your Lord. Stand with me for the reading of the word of God, please, this morning. And we have several verses of some different passages of scripture. And uh, uh, I'll well, I'm extra fond of this one, especially some of the others as well. First of all, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5 says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, that means a slave, and coming in the likeness of men. Remember, born, Mary, late manger, grew up, and all these things, right? Verse number 8. Being found in fashion, in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the what? Even the death of the cross. What's the first word, verse number nine? Therefore, therefore, when you see the word therefore, look and see what it's there for. Because of what he just said about Jesus dying on the cross and all that he accomplished, because of that, therefore, God, his Father, also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, the, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you again for this blessed and beautiful day. Thank you for the kindness and mercy and the grace you show us, Lord, every single moment of our lives, Lord. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the chance to come together in this house at this time in your name. I ask that you fill me with your spirit to bring this message for your honor and for your glory. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. In the holy and mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Uh, he is. The Bible says he is. He is Lord, always has been, always will be. And when the Bible says that, that he is Lord, Lord, Lord the, the word Lord means ultimate authority. In the, in the days of the Bible, the slave called their master, what word starts with that? Good and loud. This is participatory, okay? Y'all have to help me out, all right? And in the Roman Empire, the citizens of the Roman Empire called the emperor, and the Christians, early Christians, got in trouble with him because they called Jesus Lord. We call him that today. He is the ultimate authority. He is the one in charge of everybody, including those others who are in charge. The ultimate authority is the Lord, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, it's a capital, a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Okay, we read the word Lord in the Old Testament. We know it's talking about God Almighty. In the New Testament, it's capital L, Lord, Lord with capital O, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God said in his word here, he said, he said, everybody is going to, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, there is no question of whether or not he's Lord. And he always is and always has been. Now, when, when the Bible tells us that Jesus created the heavens and the earth, when he made all things and when he created all these things, and he holds them together in existence, it means that it also is the way that things are today. Because he is Lord, heaven exists today. Because he is Lord, earth exists today. Because he is Lord, hell exists today. Because he is Lord, the creator and sustainer of all things, you and I are in existence today. And we will be as long as he deems it to be that way. The angels are his creation and they exist today because he is Lord. He is the ultimate authority over the very fact of the existence of all things. And then not only the, because uh, of his nature as God Almighty is he Lord, but he is doubly, doubly Lord because of his, of his work that he completed on the cross of Calvary, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, he came to this earth, God in the flesh, came to this earth, and he lived a perfect life, and he went to the cross, and there he, he bore all the sins and all the burdens and all the, the anger and wrath of Almighty God. Everything unfit for God was laid on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he died in every way imaginable, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, uh, in his relationships, in his holiness, in his position, in everything. He gave everything on the cross of Calvary. There is nothing that God Almighty owns that he did not sacrifice on that cross for the salvation of our soul. Amen? 
That's what the cross means. And so when God Almighty says, I see what my beloved son has done on the cross of Calvary, therefore, because he has bled and suffered and died and shouldered these burdens and done all this magnificent work, therefore, because of that, he is doubly worthy to be called Lord because of his finished work. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of what? Of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every time we'll confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Right? Now then, when the Lord comes back, riding that white horse, the end of the book, right? Book of Revelation. When he comes back, the Bible says that the armies of heaven will be with him, and we'll all come back with him. And it says that his, his vesture's dipped in blood, he's on a white horse, and the word of God, the sword of the Lord comes out of his mouth, and it also says then, he has a name written across him. Does anybody know what that name is? King of and Lord of Lords. So he's doubly Lord, he's doubly King because of who he is, because of what he has accomplished. Now when he comes back that second time, he's not coming as the, as the meek, mild lamb of God, the sacrifice, meek and humble. He won't ride into a, a, a Jerusalem on a dinky donkey. He rides in there as a conquering king. And that's the Bible says his vesture is dipped in blood because he is, the, he is the complete culmination of both Old Testament and New Testament. And he's come back to destroy all of his enemies. And no one left on earth will ever have any question as to whether or not Jesus Christ is Lord, right? Everything in heaven and earth and under the earth will confess that he is Lord. Now, he is Lord, and there, there, there's no question about that. Because, again, nothing would even exist if it were not for the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, holding all things into existence. However, you and I have been given the opportunity the blessing and the curse and the responsibility of deciding, of choosing whether or not we will submit to the Lordship, to the authority of Jesus Christ. No one can say Jesus isn't Lord. Well, they can say it, but it don't mean anything. Because when God says something is, it is. But anyone can say, I decide that I'm not going to obey the Lord. Okay. So when it comes into your relationship with God, because he is Lord of all, then you have two choices. You can either choose to serve him, or you can choose to be in rebellion against the Lord. Are you with me? Okay. It's like, it's, it's like having a government. You say, I don't have a government. Yes, you do. Okay. I don't have a speed limit, right? Well, give that a try, see what happens. I do have a speed limit. My, my job is to decide, will I obey it or disobey it? I know I'm meddling. Okay. Well, that's the way the Lordship of Jesus Christ is. It doesn't matter whether you want him to be Lord or you accept him as Lord or not. It matters whether or not you will serve him as Lord or whether you will be in rebellion against him. Now, Jesus asked the question over the book of Luke. He asked him this. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do the things that I say? How can you say I'm your Lord if you don't obey me? Because the test of Lordship is obedience. Now, a long, long time ago, up in heaven, before, right before God made the heavens and the earth, there was this mighty angel, and he was like the uh, guardian of God's holiness. And uh, um, uh, he's, Sometimes he's called Lucifer, although the word Lucifer is not in the Bible, okay? But you know who I'm talking about, right? All right, this mighty angel, holy, glorious angel. And he decided that he wanted to be so much like God that he wanted to be ruling like God rules. And so he uh, instituted the uh, whole idea of rebellion. And he instituted the other angels, and he did all these wickedness, and got in big trouble with God. And God held him accountable. And so he got kicked out of heaven. Now his name is Satan. Right? Which means adversary. He's the adversary of God. Because, because he said over in, uh, in Isaiah and in Ezekiel, he said this. He said, uh, I will ascend on the sides of the Lord. I will exalt myself. I will be like God. Okay. God's supposed to be Lord. You're supposed to serve him. But the servant decides he don't want to be the he don't want to serve the Lord. He wants to be the Lord. Are you with me? 
Then he got kicked out of heaven. He ends up down in, the, in the Eden, and Adam and Eve, and they're eating the fruit because he tricked them and all these things. And, and so because of that, that same rebellious nature that Adam received has passed down to everybody's kin to Adam. Anybody here kin to Adam? Anybody? Anybody? Three of us? Right? Every yeah, four of us, all right. Everybody else came from what, swamp weasels? No? Okay. We're all kin to Adam. We have all inherited that sinful nature. Okay? We are natural born rebels. Here's a, here's a short list. Everybody here who loves for somebody to tell them what to do all the time, raise your hand. Me either. All right? Every single one of us are still four years old saying, you're not the boss of me. In our heart, we are, aren't we? Because I need somebody to tell me what to do from time to time, but I don't like it. Do you? I want to be the teller, not the telly. I want to be the boss. I want to do the boss and not get the boss in. Right? Right? By the way, some of y'all are really good at that, so it's possible. But you see what the problem is here? The problem with the devil is that he decided he didn't want to serve the Lord, he wanted to be the Lord. Now let's put it in a in perspective down here. Let's suppose I'm a really good husband, right? Right? Because I am. And I love my wife so much that I hire my wife a maid. Okay? Now the maid's job is to serve the wife. What if the maid decides she don't want to serve the wife? She wants to be the wife. We got problems? We got problems. Let's suppose uh, you're, a, you're an employee at the job. Your, your job as an employee is to, is, to, is to serve the boss, okay, to obey the boss. So mind you, suppose that you decide you don't want to obey the boss, you want to be the boss. You got problems? Right. Suppose you're a citizen of the United States. You're supposed to obey, uh, obey the rulers. You decide you don't want to obey the rulers, you want to be the rulers. And it just goes on and on and on and on. That is the nature of what our sin is. It is the fact that we want to supplant, we want to replace the authority that is over us. And we want to say, you know, authority's here, but I'm here, and I want to put myself up here. I will be in charge. I will be boss. I will make the decisions. I'll do the telling, and I'll do the deciding. It's all, and, and I am free and sovereign, and I can do anything I want to. That is where humanity lives. This is our sinful human nature. And that is what we as Christians are always fighting. Now, you and I then, as Christians, we want to serve the Lord. Right? Right? Because, you see, we, we, we accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue confess. We've already done that, haven't we? Many times. And we've bowed the knee and our tongues confess that Jesus Christ is the ultimate authority. Haven't we? Daily, right? Every time you go to the Lord in prayer, say, Dear Lord, do something, do whatever it might be for somebody else or for you. When we submit our prayer request to the Lord, we're putting it under the authority of the Lord. And we love to serve Him. It's our job to bring things and put them under the authority, the ultimate authority of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and let Him handle the situation. And so we find that we like it that way as Christians. That we don't, we don't just serve him as slaves serve a master. We also serve him as children serve their beloved parents. As a, a, as a worker serve their co-workers. As a, a citizen serves the king in the kingdom of God. We serve him as ambassadors of Christ. As a temples of the Holy Spirit. As agents of the Lord Jesus Christ. We serve him as, uh, as members of the, uh, of the family business. And we're working for the family business. It's our business, and it's called the kingdom of God. We serve him because uh, it brings us joy. We serve him for the blessing that we get in return. We serve him especially because we love him. Amen? Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I tell you? Why won't you serve me? Because when you serve me, you're saying Jesus is Lord. And not only that, Jesus says this, if you love me, keep my commandments. So when you keep his commandments, when you obey the Lord, it is, should be an expression of the love that you have for the Lord God Almighty. Right? Aren't there people in your life that you counted a joy to do something nice for them? 
Have you ever had a, a, an authority in your life that you really love and that you, you, you find it, and you'd be glad to do something for them because you respect them and you admire them and you want to honor them and, and appreciate them and be thankful to them and you want to put a smile on their face? Haven't you ever had people like that in your life? This is what the Lordship of Jesus Christ is supposed to be like for you and me. It's not a burden to serve the Lord. It's a joy. We don't serve our master to stay out of trouble with him. We serve our master because we love him. We don't serve our savior because we have to. We serve our savior because our savior first served us when he went to the cross of Calvary. Now every part then of my Christianity can be looked at like this. My job is to take things in my life and in my world and put them under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll give you a prime example. Do you remember when you were saved? Do you? For many of us, it was in a previous millennium. That's how old some of y'all are. Right? Yeah, me too. But I remember when, when I was saved. I remember when I got serious with Jesus. And I got down on my knees and I struggled. I've been in church my whole life and still was clueless about what faith meant. And I worked and I struggled and I worked. And it finally occurred to me, but I would say, dear, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you love me. You died for me on the cross. You're alive again today. Please forgive me and save me and come into my heart. Give me to heaven one of these days. And I, by the way, I need some help today right now. And I'd ask him to save me and then look around and see whether he did or not. This went on what, you know, just, well, felt like 40 days and 40 nights, probably a couple of hours. Until finally I realized what the Bible said. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Now I thought, huh, I know I've called on the name of the Lord because I just did. I was saved. Therefore, according to the Bible, what did he do? According to that scripture, what did he do? Save me. He saved me. And then I realized, oh, I keep looking. If he's going to, he just did. Because I called on the name of the Lord. Now, when you and I pray to Jesus, and the, there's no magic word. It's not a magic formula, okay? All right? It's just getting the attitude of your heart right. Here's what it means. It means that you take your soul, your sins, the salvation that you need, and all the things that you need from Jesus, you take all that stuff and you drag it under his authority. And you put him in charge of it. And the moment you put Jesus in charge of your salvation, what does he do? When he's Lord over your salvation, what does he do? He saves you. When you make your sins under the lordship of Jesus Christ, and you put him in charge of your sins, what does Jesus then, by his might and by his power, what does he do with your sins? He forgives them and washes them away. When you put Jesus in charge of getting you to heaven, what does he do? He got your name in the book of life and you're good to go, right? There are many other things you didn't even know what happened that Jesus Christ did for you. But here is the, is the principle that we want to live by. Here is the Lordship of Christ, and here's all this stuff that is in rebellion against him, and you take that and you put it under his authority. Now, this is why prayer works. You know what prayer means? I just told you a few minutes ago. Prayer means that you, there's something that you need God to do, and you, you can't do it by yourself. And it means that you take that desire, that request, and you ask Jesus to do it. You put it under his authority. How many of you have ever had a prayer answer? Ever. No lie. How many of you ever, ever, ever had a prayer answer? Last week. Right? Or today. Absolutely. You know what you were doing? You were doing this very thing. You were making Jesus Lord over that. Ultimate authority over that. You weren't trying to do it yourself or find some professional to do it. You say, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm calling on the name of the Lord that saved my soul. It's going, to save my, it's going to save my circumstances. It's going to save me while I drive up and down the road with all these crazy people. I need saved all the time, not just my eternal soul, but every part about me. And my job then as a Christian is to say, listen, I have got a marriage, 43-year-old marriage here, and I want it under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you, when me and Miss Evelyn, when we love each other and we love the Lord, and when, we, when he is the head of our home and the head of our marriage, that we got no problems. We're happy as little campers. I got, I, I got, oh, what do I have? I got a granddaughter in college. Imagine that. That's 
that's just killing me. All about Tyler somewhere. You know what we're doing? We're praying to dear Lord, right? Take care of her. We know that she's a slacker. Okay? You can be really, really smart and not at the same time, right? But you know, it's not, it's not just a granddaughter, it's me. Because remember, my my goal in life is to ever be as smart. I want to become as smart as I thought I was when I was 21. Okay. 21 years old, really in the bulletproof. Until I realized I needed Jesus. Amen. And so I called on the name of the Lord and I was saved. It's been a great ride since then. So, whatever it is that you need, the prayers that you need answered, the circumstances you need to handle. The, the, the answers that you need to some questions or uh, more often than not you don't get answers for the question, for the problems but you get the grace of God instead because he knows that's what you need and God is big enough and good enough and smart enough to sometimes give us what we need whether it's what we think we want or not because he's Lord and he's good and he's kind and he's merciful and he's gracious and he looks out for us and he's a, he's a wonderful Lord amen now then, again, the test, the test of whether or not Jesus is Lord is your obedience. Will you obey him or not? And this is our struggle, too, isn't it? Because it would have been nice when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Savior and made him my Lord. It would have been nice if that, if that struggle was completely over. Wouldn't it have been nice? Oh, never sin again. It'd be great. Huh? Live a perfect life and not have to worry about anything, right? Wouldn't it be great? You know what? Check back in 100 years. We'll all be there. We're not there yet. And so our struggle is to be obedient. But obedience means it's simply this. Obedience means is Jesus Lord or not? Because I'm human and he's God. But sometimes I want to be God. I'm just a fella and he is Lord. But sometimes I want to be Lord. And sometimes I'll have issues and I'll think, you know, God, stand back. I got this. And I'm going to do everything and everything and everything and try and try and try. And finally, as a last resort, as a last resort, I'll say, well, I guess I better pray about it. I guess I'm going to have to turn it over to Jesus after all. And he just comes swooping in and you know how, you know how Jesus is. And one of these days I'll learn that it's my first job, not my last job, it is my first job to take the issues of life and drag them under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Me and my bad attitude put it under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Me and my fear and my worry put it under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Me and my $2.50 put it under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Me and my health put it under the Lordship me and my wife and my kids and my grandkids and my country and my church and my issue and my yard and my dog and my clothes and my pills and you name it. Everything, you know where it belongs? Under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because it's not a question of whether he's Lord. It's a question of whether I will be an obedient servant or whether I will live in rebellion. It's yes or no. It's and even though we switch back and forth like a ping pong ball, he never does. Amen? Now, what is there in your life that you need to make Jesus Lord over? Maybe you've carried it, you've worried with it, you've struggled with it, you've toted it around, you've worried with it. And you just need to say, you know what? I am done with all this. I'm going to just give it to Jesus. You, we have a lot of words for it. We turn it over to the Lord, we say. Lay it lay it uh, at the foot of the cross, we say. Put it in his nail-scarred hands, we say. Pray a prayer of faith, we say. And there are a lot of different ways to say it, but it all just means this. Here's Jesus. Here's me. Here's my stuff. Lord, you're in charge. Amen? And it really is that simple. But it's hard because we want to give it to Jesus and hold on to it. Right? Oh, you're in charge, but I got a little control that's the rub, and that's the struggle. Sometimes we've got people that really need Jesus, and we don't know what the world is doing. You know what? You take that person, and you shut
tell them I'm on Jesus and you keep on praying. You say, Lord, help them. Take care of them. Be there for them. I can't do it. They got problems that I can't solve. Lord, you can. Start a prayer like that. Amen. And then whatever Jesus does has to be okay. Because he's Lord and we're not. So this morning, what do you have that you need to just give to Jesus? Say, you know what? I'm done again. Here's what you will have. Jesus said this. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, my love, my burden. Okay? And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you will find rest to your soul. When I take my junk and I put it on the Lord's wagon, it is a relief. And I will find that under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I will find not that there's just labor and sweat and agony and trouble and burdens. I will find that under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, there's love, joy, peace, grace, mercy, strength that goes beyond anything that I can drum up on my own. It is a great place to live. Dear Lord Jesus, again, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for the goodness that you have to us. Thank you, Lord, for making us in the first place and keeping us going to this very day. And thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of being able to accept and to uh, surrender and to yield and to just enjoy the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that whatever you do, you do very well, so much better than we do. And thank you, Lord, that there's not an issue that we have in life that is not welcome to be brought to Jesus Christ and left to your nails guard Jesus. Help us to be mindful of this very thing that we might work in the, as co-workers with you, as servants of the Lord God, God Almighty, to follow you, Lord, and to do what you lay before us. We love you. We thank you for